Hey, it's Adam with Tech Dive AV Club, take two. I actually just recorded this whole thing and then realized I had, didn't hit the record button, so that's a lot of fun. Um, but we're going to take a look at this fun, complicated timeline of mine and talk about what makes it so complicated. My hope for this video is that you can learn something from my workflow and method and thought and that you can give me suggestions maybe if you find something that you're like, why are you doing it that way or whatever. Uh, also, uh, this one's just a lot of fun because it actually it's two videos in one. Um, so some tricks I did to do that and uh, it's got animations and it's got uh, track animations and it, it's just a fun one. So this is uh, this is one I thought would be good to break down. So let's break it down. So first off, um, I have this clip right here. This is my main master shot. I only had like a couple of clementines, so I was just trying to to do it in one take. And there's a little bit of a fail here. When I do this jump cut, uh, it, it's a little more obvious than I was hoping for. Uh, that's the way to do that better. Uh, obviously, it's just a cut. It's just to um, pay better attention to your framing when you're filming it and film multiple takes and film more motion. If I had waved my hand around more bizarrely and filmed it multiple times, I would have been able to do a more seamless jump cut. I've done them in the past. Sadly, that one didn't pan out. So this is just uh, me. So the reason I decided to include this part right here is because uh, I try to actually fix my hair. I didn't mean to do that for the camera. This is all incidental. Uh, it's unfixed. And so instead of people just watching the entire video, because they get distracted by weird things, people do, you know. Uh, instead of people watching the entire video thinking, what is up with that guy's mop? Um... I figured I would just include make that a little joke there because it just I didn't fix my hair like I thought it did so uh, my hair is kind of goofy the entire time so now it's called closing a loop in writing uh, it, the question has been answered people can move on and pay attention to everything else uh, and then so to do that this this text effect right here this is just obviously a text in a separate track there's reasons I did this in separate tracks I'm going to talk about that more in a second uh, but this text effect just a basic text and I got an animation on it you could just select an animation right there. This simple slide left animation, this is just pre-done by Vegas. Uh, but the arrow key right there, this is a PNG of an arrow that I made. Um, this I actually had to animate myself, which included like positioning and um, how to actually make it float across the screen like the other one. It's not perfectly like the other one, but it's close enough for for these cookies right here. So I'm done uh, with that. And that made me happy. And then it goes to the intro. This intro right here is just my standard intro. It's a MP4 that I've rendered out. Uh, in the future, I will actually be using Vegas Intermediary Codec for this intro because it will be much, much more um, compression happy when I do that. Or I might use a timeline on a timeline I haven't decided yet because then I can go back and edit the intro all the time and still it'll be the same timeline and timeline intro everywhere so that's a cool idea uh, but it's something I haven't had time to implement yet despite the fact that I told everybody I was going to implement that I, I didn't actually implement it so this next part right here is what makes it really neato is I actually separated some things out in different tracks because if I mute uh, if I un if I unmute this track and mute this track uh, then now it's a Vegas tutorial because it was a movie studios tutorial But then I unmute this track and then mute this track and then now it's a Vegas Pro tutorial I actually have edited the same video twice uh, With the different parts that need to be different in different places um, that includes on the same track here That is can now mute it if I unmute that you can see a little note um, the, in the script, I didn't realize this. Usually I try and catch it, or most of the time I actually record an entirely separate video for movie studios uh, as opposed to pro because there's some subtle differences in things where I just usually record it entirely separately. This one was scripted, um, or mostly scripted. So uh, there's actually, I didn't realize that se selectively pasting event attributes is only a pro thing. So um, now, uh, now when I make this a movie studios video, I, it includes that note. So that's, you know, just something you can do. So now I have actually two videos off one timeline. Uh, I did have to edit all this down here, but it's mostly the same. The differences are more about where and how long these little crunchies right here. It's because I needed more time. And um, what I did is I had to go back and record myself doing these um, fun little edits and stuff. And as I recorded myself doing them, um, I did a longer takes for Pro, but for Movie Studios, I did short takes because it was the second time I was recording it. 
and uh, I actually had to hit the control key and stretch some of them out to fit uh, the time slot that I needed it to fit since I had this, was following the same edit as the Pro edit. So that's another little trick right there. So this little timeline is interesting because this clip has a few different effects on it. First off, when before I cut this take into 100 different pieces, this is all one take, uh, before I cut it into 100 different pieces, I uh, it was supposed to be just me coherently reading the script and peeling an orange. I actually had to pause and read the script, then continue eating the orange. So uh, it's it's uh, these are just unabashed jump takes right here of me uh, continuing to eat. But uh, I tried to pause and, and be fair and not eat the Mandarin at all when I was reading. Um, but uh, because of that mistake right there, I had to cut it in little pieces. Before I cut it in little pieces, I took this and I made a couple of corrections on it. So this is what a base shot looks like. Normally I would have held up a color card and color corrected it to it because my face is a little red and it would have gotten rid of little things like that. The white balance on my camera is okay, but it, you know, it could always be more perfect and the more perfect thing usually happens in Vegas Pro. So while 90% of the time on my more recent videos, I always hold up that little card. I went back to an old trick of mine. I actually just sat desaturated the colors a little bit because that kind of hides the fact that the red spikes a little bit. Um, and and I don't and it saves me a lot of time. I don't have to sit there and mess around with flying blind color correcting. Uh, so I just did a desaturation and then I uh, increased the contrast with this levels effect right here. I always do that. Uh, well, you can do this in the color correction wheel as well. It's it's this input output stuff. It's the same thing. Um, but let me get rid of that again. Um, but since I wasn't actually using the color correction wheels this time, I oh now I see now I got that color grading effect on there. Um, uh, I just used the old levels effect. It's the same thing, works the same way. It's good stuff. So uh, that increased the contrast of it, and it did it. Even though I cut the clip into little pieces, that effect carries over to every single uh, piece of it. So now I have different than the timeline um, um, effect uh, like effects on it. But when I take a picture, see I took a little snapshot here. Uh, for this freeze frame. When I took the snapshot, what it did was it allowed me to uh, put that snapshot there and leave it on the same track uh, without it inherit. It, well, it's still inheriting these right here. It doesn't inherit um, the corrections to the original take, uh, which is nice because then I would have had to just make a whole another track, put this on the track. Uh, which it probably would have just been by itself on a track because I try to keep media as separated as possible. So uh, I didn't have to do that because, um, because, because I because that's how I assigned the video effects. So another quick thing too is I just used to do the free frame. I just grabbed a snapshot to file uh, from from this last little shot right here. Um, somebody told me before, like, why don't you just use velocity and move velocity down to zero? Because that's messy. Uh, if you're speed ramping, velocity is great. Uh, I just want to do a quick freeze frame and move on, so I did, and I'm done. And uh, I'm going to delete all these files in a month or two anyway, so it doesn't matter. So um, that's a little freeze frame there, and it moves on to this effect, and that's a jump cut. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. Everybody wants to talk about this cookie cutter and positioning. Uh, this is actually a track motion effect and a uh, cookie cutter. Um, so you're looking at the cookie cutter right now, but the position is uh, track motion uh, when you add it in this little radial button right here. But uh, people think track motion, I highlight track effect, track motion, they think that's motion tracking. It's not. Bezier masking is motion tracking. This is moving and animating your track around. You can actually make it 3D if you do, uh, if you do a... Uh, if you if you change your overlay composite mode from uh, 2D source alpha to 3D source alpha, uh, but we're not talking about that today. So, um, but I have it kind of zoom in and zoom out. One reason I wanted to do the cookie cutter as well on the track is because I just want to be able to anything on this track. I just want to be able to put down and pull back up, and it worked quite well. Um, the reason why I have the cookie cutter on it and, and, and I take the cookie cutter off again is because, as you can see here, if I take the cookie cutter off, it's this nasty little blip right there, and that covers up a lot of the frame. This is just black. No one needs to see it. So the cookie cutter effect allows me to. Um, that's just green because it's green. That doesn't. Have, there's no. There's no. Um, color actually being shown on it. Um, I picked a shape and I feathered it a little bit and got something that kind of gives me a nice little haloed effect um, that that really 
lets me overlay on it without causing a lot of problems. So then let's move on. We got so much to talk about. Uh, this is my patron thing. It's just this is a stock clip that I have um, saved right here. It's called patrons, and so I just pick it uh, out of my stuff and then if you want to add to this it, it, when someone becomes a patron i add their name up there uh it's a five dollar patron sorry um if you become a five dollar or more patron then i add your name up here and then you become part of my save file and you become in a way part of my project every time part of my vegas experience so um if you're interested in that i'm interested so anyway uh uh so that's the complicated track right there um some fun things is this is the uh like i said i talked about um time crunching the uh video and audio i talked about all that so now we're gonna move to audio 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 so fun fact this is just recorded with my road video micro my road video micro uh is a little uh midi so uh, i actually increased the bass on it and the track effect and i decreased the mids i actually have a whole tutorial about audio grading that goes into it in more detail this is just a rough one i did this is a roll off i just did a little roll off because there's a bit of a hiss to it this is minimizes the hiss microscopically not major uh, i could get rid of this and 99.9 percent .9 of people wouldn't notice so i don't know why i even wasted my time but i did it because it made me feel better um I did uh, do a compressor on it too. That makes my loud talking and my soft talking become closer together on this little master bus right here. Uh, that means that the volume of my soft talking and my loud talking becomes closer together and that is a great thing for me because it makes it easier for people to hear me and I can be more consistent. So uh, I put that on there. I upped the volume a little bit but then I found out I upped it too much. So instead of coming back in here and downing the volume, I just downed it on this track right here. Um, there's actually that that works a different way. Um, there's different math and stuff behind that. I can't to explain that to you right now. Um, and I would actually have to look it up before I could talk to you about it. So we're not going to talk about it right now. Um, I have this one muted. This is the original music from my intro. But my intro, I decided to use the actual track. Uh, this is a track my band and I recorded. I'm not in a band anymore, but I used to be. It was a lot of fun, and we recorded some songs. This is one of the songs we recorded. That's why I have the rights to it. Um, I just started it in the same spot. I start the intro, but instead of the intro fading off, I wanted to keep going. This is Lazy Man Audio Ducking. So I wanted to get the audio lower uh, when I'm talking so you can hear, uh, but I wanted it to be fill. I wanted it to be the right volume up here so that way people didn't turn their headphones all the way up and then my voice go blah, blah, blah really loud. So uh, this is louder, this is softer, and I did it with the gain effect. Um, now there is a more elegant way to do this. If you go to audio envelopes and add in your volume envelopes, you can actually lower and increase the volume with uh, with like a little points on the timeline. Um, but that's that's way more than I want to do. I just needed to do it once. So I just actually have a fade. This is a fade transition, and this is synchronously the same. The same music is happening at the same time for both of these. So it's really just fading one and upping the other, but there is no difference because the music is exactly time sync the same. Um, so you just hear, it just sounds like it gets quieter. Uh, and that's why I did it. It's so much easier, and I didn't have to do anything else or add any more muddiness to this already complicated timeline. So this is the uh, little music I grabbed from YouTube Audio Library. It's sad music to accompany the intro here. I didn't actually EQ this audio-wise as loud because uh, it was a bit more obnoxious of music, and this is probably where people are going to be adjusting their headphones, not this little... Uh, technically less than seven second clip so um but it's close to loud it, it's about 15 is where that hits yeah about 15 so um i didn't feel a reason to uh edit this anymore i don't even think i put a compression on this one yeah no there's no compressor on this track either that one just i just slid it on there jokes were out, done ready to move on so that is a rough explanation of the track there's a couple more things i can talk about this is how i did my thumbnail i just grabbed uh, this is the generic backdrop. Um, that's just a video of one of the video clips I had. Boom, generic backdrop. Uh, now it's a movie studios. Now it's a Vegas Pro one because um, I just layered these up and how I wanted them. This is simply just a, a mask of me that I could do ultra quick. Uh, it's not a lazy mask, crappy mask. If you zoomed in, you'd be like, ew, it's not a very good mask. That's okay. Thumbnails aren't very big. So 
Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time on it. This is just a solid color that I kind of made a little bit see-through, and then I did a crappy, crappy mask on this too to make it a little bit Picasso geometric shape. I used an orange to match some of the orange here, and, you know, I'm eating an orange-related fruit, so I thought that would be a nice little color scheme there. Uh, I actually increased the contrast on the photo uh, with an effect, the levels effect again, so this is not, I feel like, acceptable levels for the video, but for a thumbnail, you want it to be a little more pop. So I added some more pop there. So that is, oh, and then I just, you know, hit the save the snapshot file, then boom, that uploaded right to YouTube. Sometimes to save the snapshot, it's a little too big for YouTube. So then I have to go to a, a photo editor and compress it back down. Um, I didn't have to do that this time. I just took it. So thank you so much for watching. This has been made possible by patrons and people buying things through the affiliates links and people watching the videos and people liking the videos. And that's you guys. So thank you to all of you guys so much. I hope you learned something from this. Uh, some of the stuff's pro only, but some of the stuff applies to movie studios too. Uh, I'll do some more kind of generic videos like this one, but this is just a look at my timeline and why I did what I did. And this is a kind of a spaghetti, throwing spaghetti on the table and seeing what you learn. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.